Last time, I went over the causes and the process of diagnosing glaucoma. Today, I'll be talking about some novel research that aims to increase the efficacy of glaucoma diagnosis. A fair warning, I'm not an expert in deep learning or image segmentation, so I'll be poorly summarizing most of the super technical stuff. Oh yeah, papers linked in the description below, as always. One thing, when I say fundus image in this video, I'm talking about the fundus image of the eye, like one of these. Alright, the title of this paper is Joint Optic Disc and Cup Segmentation Based on Densely Connected Depthwise Separable Convolution Deep Network. Let's break that down. Remember last time when I talked about ophthalmoscopy and how you could calculate cup to disc ratio by measuring the size of an optic cup and optic disc in a fundus image? Yeah, neither do I. Go rewatch that section. Anyway, joint optic disc and cup segmentation basically means the distinction of the optic cup and optic disc in an image of the optic nerve. Once you segment them out, you can calculate the cup to disc ratio, which is a very nice measurement in the assessment of glaucoma progression. Essentially, the goal of this study was to build and train a neural network to automatically segment the optic disc and cup in the fundus image. But what's wrong with just segmenting it by hand and just calculating the cup to disc ratio independently of some fancy software? Listen dude, if you're trying to screen an entire population for glaucoma, and you take pictures of like 10,000 funduses, having an experienced clinician sit there and label them all is time consuming and expensive. A trained neural network could process all those images in literally a few seconds, if not less. In terms of past work in this particular niche of glaucoma research, that is, using computers to segment funduses, this paper is basically the first to present a system that can automatically determine the relevant parts of the fundus image, narrow that part down, and then segment the optic cup and disc at good accuracy at the same time. So the network that our researchers have built here is called a DDSCNet, a U-shaped convolutional neural network. Here's a picture of that network structure. You have several layers of input. Downscaled versions of the same fundus image are inputted at each layer. Our inputs are propagated through the network, and then a softmax function spits out their results, which can be visualized as properly segmented regions. Alright, network structure is all well and cool. Let's talk about training. Since the source of datasets used for training were kind of small, investigators translated, rotated, added noise, adjusted brightness for every fundus image to artificially create a larger dataset. That's called data augmentation, and it can help prevent overfitting, or when deep learning models only work on the data they were trained on. Investigators used the Atom Optimizer to, in order to adjust weights during training. Atom, or Adaptive Movement Estimation, is a more efficient approach to neural network training. In a nutshell, it's pretty good because it tends not to over adjust as much as other optimization algorithms do, leading to faster training times. To summarize, the network built is a convolutional neural network that takes in pictures of the fundus and outputs the segmentation of that fundus. Our investigators actually use two networks that are trained differently in one segmentation. One simple network to roughly determine the borders of the optic cup, and one network to precisely segment both the optic cup and the optic disc. The first network's purpose is pretty much just to determine the region of interest in the fundus, and then crop the image to that region of interest. Then, that's fed into the second network, and then we get a final result. Okie dokie, time for results. Take a look at these segmented regions. Ground truth represents the correct segmentation done by a human, and this is what our model produced. Take a look at this comparison to other networks as well. It's a bit more effective than others that were trained on the same datasets. Very, very, very cool stuff. Props to the authors of this paper. It's linked in the description as always. I encourage you to check out the sources they cited as well. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe.